Morning, Chairman, sir, my seniors and colleagues. Today I am presenting good engineering practices for the highways. Ma'am, just go slide show back, please. Yes, please. Sir. thank you. Yes, thank you. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Today we are talking about the abutment position near the RE wall, where the approach slab is placed. And we have been finding nowadays a lot of uh, distress in the approach lab location due to the various factors. So, uh, uh, first of all, we'll discuss about the abutment where this approach lab is placed. So, earlier we have seen the abutment used to be earth retaining structure where earth is supported by the wall, which is uh, constructed throughout the deck width. But uh, after uh, coming of RE wall, we have observed that in the cases of flyovers, underpasses, ROVs, and minor bridges on the canals, these typical earth retaining abutments are slowly, slowly replaced by back RE wall with the column gear. So the purpose of back RE wall is basically back RE wall will take the earth pressure and the vertical load of the superstructure or the live load from the vehicles will be taken care by the column pier. So I have just uh, proposed a comparison how this back RE wall is started use, using in the highway bridges or flyovers or underpasses. So when we compare this earth retaining abutment with back RE wall, it is seen that for a height of about 10 meter or more, the earth retaining abutment becomes a little complicated to construct as well as it is highly economical, uneconomical. When we talk about the strata for open foundation with a rocky strata, this is okay. But when it comes to the pile foundation, the pile foundations with a very poor capacity, uh, horizontal as well as the vertical, the number of the piles requirement increases very much, maybe up to 20 to 25 numbers. So in that case, this earth retaining abutment becomes very uneconomical. There is a huge implication of the cost for around 12 meter height, approximately 4 crore on one abutment. This we have done the calculations and the comparisons for the 12 meter height with a back hurry wall and a pier uh, versus this earth retaining abutment. So we have found that the back hurry wall is very economical. But for that reason, the back RE wall is being very much used nowadays, especially where the water is not flowing. So uh, with the back RE wall, we have found that the due to the only vertical load, the foundation size is very much reduced. The number of piles becomes almost 50% or less than that. And so it becomes highly economical proposal. We have seen that the earth retaining abutment, the construction for the approaches can start only once the abutment is constructed, means backfilling cannot be started till the abutment is constructed. And if it is very high abutment, it will take good time. But with back RE wall and the pier type abutment, what happens? Both are independent of each other. We can start backfilling along with the back RE wall. We can separately construct our pier. So both are independent. This results in a very fast construction. So definitely these uh, advantages uh, are there, but we have seen that a lot, lot of distress at this location on our highways is observed. Reason being, we are using back array wall, but not with certain precautions or consideration for the approaches and their arrangement. That is missed and that is how uh, we are facing a lot of distress on the approaches. So with this back RE wall, one more uh, structure is come into uh, this uh, uh, approaches. That structure is known as gap, gap slab. So basically when we have provided back RE wall, what happens behind the back, the back RE wall was placed on the foundations. So weight of the earth behind the back RE wall and the weight of back RE wall was coming on the foundation and this was increasing the size of the foundation. The economy which was planned was not happening. So slowly this gap slab was developed. Gap slab, with the gap slab what happened? We pushed the back RE wall away from the footing so that the gap slab weight 
only comes on the uh, approaches and no weight come on the footing. So this is the arrangement we can see. The gap slab is shifted, uh, a black wall is shifted away and a uh, gap is created between the pier cap dirt wall and uh, RE wall. So this gap is filled by a placement of gap slab. So this gap slab, sometimes it is constructed continuous with the approach slab. But in some cases, what we are doing, gap slab length is huge. Sometimes it becomes around 5.5 meter because this footing dimension is very high in the case of weak strata, where SBC is poor. So what now the people are doing, they have increased this length up to 5 meter. And this gap slab is being supported on this uh, arrangement that is known as bank seat. So back gap slab, one side is supported on the bracket of the pier cap dirt wall and other side it is supported on the bank seat. So as the length of the gap slab increases, the load increases, the number of live load axles on the gap slab increases and finally the vertical reaction on the bank seat increases. And this vertical reaction will be from one side of the gap slab and other side of the approach slab because after the bank seat we have placed the approach slab. So total from both sides reaction is increasing. Approach slab reaction will not increase. Approach slab is fixed length 3.5 meter. But what happens as the gap slab length increases, the live load reaction increases, the gap slab reaction increases. So finally, this bank seat will get more reaction, which will transfer more surcharge on back RE wall. Back RE wall has one, only one disadvantage because of corners between the parallel and the back arrow wall, the compaction is little critical. So uh, more precaution is required during the compaction of the earth. This earth, if not properly compacted at the back arrow wall location, will result in the settlement of bank seat. Settlement of bank seat will, uh, will distress the gap slab as well as the approach slab. What happens, this gap slab and approach slab get rested on the back arrow wall because it, due to the settlement of bank seat, the one side will get lifted and other side will settle down. So it will get supported on the back arrow wall. Due to the huge, uh, then what happens, <clears throat> the back arrow wall, back arrow wall will be experiencing the load of live load gap slab and the crash barrier. The crash barrier is generally supported on the gap slab. So this complete load when transferred on the RE wall, back RE wall as well as side RE wall, this will give, create a vertical reaction because the earth below the gap slab or the bank seat is settled and there is no support from the earth. It is only supported on the sides and the RE wall. And RE wall is not designed for this vertical load. So this finally result in the distress in the approach slab location. It distress the RE wall. RE wall height is the maximum at this location. And due to this distress, we have seen the bulging of the RE wall. So we have to see due to the poor compaction, there is a bulging of RE wall because of transfer of this load of the gap slab on the RE wall. Then we can see when we construct the RE wall, the, there is a friction slab with crash barrier for the placement of crash barrier on the RE wall. But what happens when at this location, at this approach slab locations, what happens, the approach slab and the crash barrier are cast in situ and approach slab is placed outer to outer of the crash barrier, not inner to inner. So what happens whenever the settlement of earth is there, the complete load of approach slab get again transferred on the RE wall rather than getting transferred on the earth. As a result of this, the distress of the RE wall is there along with the back wall. We can see that there is a distress of the dirt wall also in this photograph. This is some of the projects of NH where we can see very clearly the back RE wall and the distressed dirt wall along with the bracket because of the settlement of the approach slab along with the crash barrier. In case of earth retaining abutment also, we have observed that if the approach slab is constructed from end to end with cast into crash barrier, the 
RCC return wall also get distressed because the approach slab get rested on the return wall because of the settlement of the approach earth. So what happens? This always we have seen whether it is a back RE wall, it is a earth retaining abutment. Always we have seen in the approach slab location, always distress is observed. So there are some solutions we have suggested to these are the solutions. We should not provide gap slab at all. Back RE wall is definitely required where economy is required. But gap slab can be easily removed. Gap slab, if removed, we can directly place RE wall behind the bracket on the footing. Although due to this, there will be a transfer of earth load on the footing, but it will have minor implications. So this can be easily done. Approach slab to be provided directly on the back wall, separated by the filler material. So this filler material is very much important. Sometimes what happened, the filler material is missed and the approach slab, their gap is not maintained between the approach slab and the RE wall or the friction slab with crash barrier and the RE wall and the load gets directly transferred. So this filler material is missed and then this distress starts. So we have to take care. With the filler material, approach slabs can be directly placed on the back RE wall, maintaining a gap between the back RE wall and the approach slab. And also the crash barrier should be cast, pre-cast rather than cast in situ. So what happens now in the approach slab locations to avoid two, crash, uh, two slabs, like crash barrier with friction slab and approach slab, one slab placed over other, generally crash barrier in the approach slab location casted along with the approach slab. So when settlement happens, complete weight of crash barrier with approach slab will cause the settlement. So what we should do? We should avoid casting of crash barrier on the approach slab, approach slab to be placed to the inner inner face of the crash barrier rather than complete deck weight to the outer outer faces. So this friction slab with crash barrier will always make the load transfer to the earth for the crash barrier, not on the RE wall. There are some more suggestions like approach slab locations, whether it is a back RE wall or earth retaining structure can always be strengthened with the geo cell. There are certain experiments going on in the case of railway approaches and we can also try geo cell with PCC or geo cell with GSB with a proper compaction can definitely help in making approach slab stable and avoiding its settlement. Rectangular footing, which are provided at the abutment location, can be reduced in the size in the traffic direction so that less load comes on the abutment. So, uh, earth retaining abutment is the last option. We can think of that, but not at the cost, too much cost. For the smaller height, definitely we can think, but back RE wall with these precautions will definitely help us in maintaining our approaches to any structure. Now I come to the vertical cracks in the crash barrier. We have observed that in the case of interchanges where loops and ramps are proposed, these are constructed with RE wall. The friction slab with crash barrier is placed there. But we have seen that the crash barriers are casted continuous without any gap. So this, these are some of the projects uh, where the, we have observed that there are vertical cracks in the crash barrier. Reason being, the crash barrier is for the fast construction, crash barrier is constructed in the molds continuously throughout the land without bothering of any gap in the crash barrier. Due to the temperature and shrinkage stresses, this crash barrier will try to expand and contract. And due to that, there will be definitely cracks if the expansion is not permitted. So we have seen this, cracks are happening. The vertical cracks are also observed in the crash barrier where the expansion joints are there. We have seen that the, at the expansion joint location, the vertical gaps in the crash barrier is missed. Also in the deck continuity locations, nowadays we are constructing expressways and in expressways it is mandatory to give the expansion joint at 100 meter uh, interval. So the crash barriers are constructed continuous. So uh, as per the codal guidelines and as per the stresses transfer requirement, always a gap to be provided. Like we are giving expansion gap, there should be gap in the crash barrier also. 
So this is uh, these are the cases where the expansion joints expansion gaps are missed in the crash barrier. So what we have to do as per our IRC six amendment, the friction slab with crash barrier should be casted in the panels, panels of maximum three point five meter height. The stability of the friction slab with crash barrier is done. All calculation done for 3.5 meter height with the placement of a vertical load on it. So accordingly, only the placement to be done at the site. If 3.5 meter panel load is more, then definitely we can cast half precast and bring at the site, and remaining can be cast in situ like this. But cast in situ should also be of 3.5 meter interval. We have to give gap. As per IRC SP 66, that is for deck continuity. Always we have to give expansion gaps in crash barrier wherever deck continuity is provided. Deck will be definitely continuous. There will no be no expansion joint in the deck, but crash barrier to be discontinued. If that crash barrier is not discontinued, the behavior of the deck continuity will not be as desired and also the crash barrier. The stresses due to the deck continuity in the crash barrier will definitely bring the distress in the crash barrier. As per MOT circulars and MOT guidelines, in the case of normal crash barrier, without the friction slab or uh, in the approaches, maximum 20 meter gap should be, after every 20 meter expansion gap should be there. So this we have to follow as a good engineering practices to make our approaches safe and stable. Thank you.